In episode nine, you find out exactly what Beard did when he said he was going to walk this one off. He ends up taking the train home, just sitting by himself. But when he gets into his apartment, he turns on the TV and he feels that the commentators are just ripping him apart, even though they're not. Tyrion Henri especially is going really hard at Beard and his tactics. But once again, it's really just all in his head. They are discussing the game, though. And they are discussing how Richmond really struggled that day against Man City. So he decides to go blow off some more steam at the pub. The bartender asks, is Jane coming? And he says, no, we broke up. He told Jane that he loved her and she wouldn't reciprocate. But Jane has really been weighing on Beard's mind. Most of Richmond, though, have been thinking about the game. Especially the bartender, who, just like Tieran Henri in Beard's head, starts ripping him apart for all of his tactics. He decides to go just sit alone in the corner with his beer when Jane texts him and says, I saw the results. You want to come find me? I think it's what you need. And Beard writes out this whole message that he can't keep doing this. He told her how he felt, and he doesn't want to be strung along anymore. But he ends up deleting it. The text message with Jane ends up getting interrupted when the supporters show up. And they start talking about the match, but Beard tells them, you can sit down as long as we don't talk about the match. So over the course of the night, they throw back a lot of beers, and they start diving into some pretty heavy topics, like the entire world being the Matrix. But eventually, they close down the bar. Now, the supporters are like, yeah, we'll just go home. But Beard says, no, this night ain't ending. Where can we go? And they let Beard know of a private club that is really tough to get into, even as a dress code. Luckily for them, though, the bartender keeps a lost and found of old clothes. So they put on some hand-me-downs and head on over there. But right before they leave, though, Jane texts Beard once again a selfie of herself in front of a neon cross, and it says, I'm atoning for all my sins. Beard, though, once again doesn't answer because now he's on a mission to get into that club. And Beard's honestly not that worried about how he's going to do it. He has a plan. He goes up to the person at the front door, he gets their name, and then he has one of the supporters call up and tell her that her apartment's on fire. And it works. She ends up running out of the place, and they end up sauntering on in. One of the supporters feels pretty bad about what they just did, but Beard says no. That girl will appreciate her apartment tomorrow like she's never appreciated an apartment ever. As soon as they actually get to the club, though, the supporters feel like they don't belong. And Beard tells them, knock that off right now. You belong here. If you could be anywhere right now, where would you want to be? Right here, right? Well, act like it. Beard then heads to the bar to get everybody some drinks when one of the women at the club catches his eye. And I understand why. She is a smoke show. But Beard grabs the drinks and heads back to find the supporters where they're playing pool with a bunch of Oxford douchebags. And the supporters aren't doing a really good job of blending in. Beard, however, does a phenomenal job at it. He tells the Oxford D-bags that he was a professor at Oxford and that these three were the best of the best that Oxford has ever offered. But Beard is unaware that these three douchebags actually went to Oxford. So they start quizzing Beard about Oxford, what college he taught at, where he lived... And amazingly, Beard passes all of their tests. At the end of the night, they're completely convinced that Beard actually taught at Oxford. And the way that Beard knew all this about Oxford is the fact that he used to date an Oxford professor, and Beard ended up doing this crazy thing called listening. As the supporters and the Oxford douchebags end up playing some pool, the woman in the red dress that caught Beard's attention before ends up catching it again. He ends up walking after her, but ends up losing her in a hallway. So Beard starts opening up some doors and so Beard starts opening up some doors and the first one he opens is a random room with a bunch of televisions stacked up on each other. Beard's kind of confused by this, so he sits down and is drinking his beer. When Beard starts imagining that all the TVs are turning on, they're all to the game and Tyrion Henri is once again ripping Coach Beard. Going so far as to say that Beard's self-esteem is so low, he would need a pep talk to commit suicide. And Tieran Henri would love to give him that pep talk. When Beard gets up to get out of the room, he rips his pants and he yells. And one of the security guards ends up hearing this, comes into the room, and wants to know where Beard's membership card is. And obviously he doesn't have it, so he gets kicked out. But the smoke show that he was after is now outside on the street. She lets him know that his pants are ripped, but she doesn't live too far away. And she can fix them. And when a really hot woman offers to fix your ripped pants, you take them up on that offer every single time. And Beard does that. He heads back to her apartment and she is giving off some vibes. That's one way to put it. Like she could be a complete serial killer psychopath because she tells Beard that she has a bunch of clothes from ex-lovers that she just keeps. It's her thing. But she's just hot enough where you go with it. So Beard takes off his ripped pants, gives them to her to fix, and she ends up giving him some disco pants that he can put on for the time being. 
They start talking about love, and he says he thinks he's in love right now with this woman who he can't stop thinking about. But then the woman in the red dress's cell phone rings. She asks Beard to get it, and it's a FaceTime with a guy who immediately questions who Beard is. The woman explains to the guy on FaceTime who Beard is, but he is so enraged that he vows to beat the hell out of Beard when he actually gets there. And while the woman tells Beard that this guy on FaceTime is nothing to worry about, Beard suddenly isn't so sure when the guy starts banging on the door. So Beard tries to get the hell out of there. He ends up taking the fire escape to the roof, but the guy ends up in pursuit. It gets to the point where Beard's only option is to jump into the dumpster. Beard takes off running from the guy and ends up hopping on one of the buses, where a Karen rats him out for not paying. And the issue is Beard left his cell phone and his wallet in that woman's apartment. So he can't pay, and he ends up getting kicked off. He wanders into a hotel and asks to use the front desk phone, call for a cab, but the concierge says, no, it's for guests only. He then asks to use the concierge's personal cell phone, but the concierge is convinced that this is all a scam to get his identity. So Beard just ends up wandering out of the hotel. He goes down an alley where he sees three guys walking towards him, and he's convinced that these three are the supporters. But when he actually gets close enough to see who they are, turns out it's Jamie Tart's dad and his two friends. And Jamie Tart's dad is out for revenge. They end up chasing after Beard and beating the hell out of him. And Jamie's dad ends up picking up a pipe and is about to cave in Beard's head when Beard is saved by that guy who is chasing after him from the mystery woman's apartment. Once he knocks out Jamie's dad and he chases off his two friends, Beard's thinking that he's about to get the crap beat out of him some more. But the guy ends up just giving his cell phone and wallet back and saying, Here, you forgot these at our apartment. I've been trying to find you. As they walk back to the street, the guy explains to Beard that He's a little bit of a hothead, but his girlfriend, Mary, explained the whole situation. The couple's having a baby, and he was worried that she was cheating on him because he used to be a cheat, so it's just something that he's been trying to fix, and he thinks he's been better at it. He does let Beard know, though, that Mary is keeping his pants, but she did say that he can keep the disco pants. So it's a pretty even trade-off. When the two guys go their separate ways, Beard looks at his cell phone, and he has 52 messages and 72 missed calls from Jane. And as he scrolls up to the text messages, he sees why there was panic from Jane's side, because she told Beard, I love you. I mean, it's followed by a bunch of fuck yous, you haven't responded, there's a lot of men after me, but Beard is excited because he got what he wanted. When he goes to call Jane, though, his phone dies. It's just been one of those nights. So he is forced to walk alone, back home, beaten and bruised. But as he's doing so, a limo pulls up, because the supporters have been able to track Beard down. They ended up taking those Oxford guys for so much money and pool, and they ended up buying themselves a limo. And they're ready to keep the party going, but Beard says, no, take me home. The supporters oblige and drop him off at his house, but since the supporters don't want this night to end, Beard gives him an address and says, here, take this to Renee and tell him Coach Beard said it was okay. And when they go to that address, it's a random door that says, do not enter. And when they bang on it, some old guy is standing behind it and says, yes. And the supporters hand him the note and said, Coach Beard said it was okay. So this guy leads them down a dark and dangy alley. But when they get to the end of it, it's Nelson Road, the stadium. Coach Beard allowed the supporters to go onto the pitch and play soccer for a bit. And they are completely in their glory. Night didn't go so well for Coach Beard, though, after he was dropped off. Coach Beard isn't used to these English keys, and he was a little too rough trying to open up his door, and the key ended up breaking inside of it, so he has no way to get in. And on top of it, it ended up downpouring. So Coach Beard ended up walking over to a church where, just outside of it, there's a neon cross. A neon cross that looks just like the one that Jane ended up taking a selfie in front of. But when Beard ends up getting into the church, there is no Jane. There's nobody. So with nowhere else to turn, Beard ends up praying to God. He starts praying to God about his relationship with Jane, saying that when he's with her, the world just feels more interesting. But then Beard starts faintly hearing some music. And when he follows it, it turns out that it is in fact a church, but it moonlights as a nightclub. And when Beard ends up going down to that club, he throws all his reservations out the window. He lets loose. And while he's dancing, he ends up running into Jane. The next day, Beard does end up showing up for work. Ted does end up asking Beard about his face because it's all beat up from Jamie's dad, but Beard just says, I must have fallen out of the bed. They then get in a coaching film. Nobody wants to rewatch yesterday's game, so they start doing so with the Benny Hill theme music in the background. It makes it easier to watch. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought this sucked. Make sure to be nice in the comment section. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen there, I'll get it up in a few days not to worry. And I have merchandise, you know? So go buy a mug or something. It's never too early to think about Christmas gifts, folks. Once again, thank you for checking out this recap.